Welcome to the San Francisco Ethics Commission's Contact Lobbyist Training. This training discusses the city's contact lobbyist ordinance and its implementing regulations, including changes that took effect in 2022. The discussion of the lobbyist rules in this training are necessarily general. If you have specific questions regarding the rules or their application, please contact Ethics Commission staff at 415-252-3100 or visit the Commission's website at www.sfethics.org or read the actual laws or regulations that are cited in the slides. If there is a conflict between what is presented in this training and the law, the law governs. If you have questions following this training, please send them to ethics.commission at sfgov.org or call 415-252-3100. The information provided in this training is taken from the San Francisco Campaign and Governmental Conduct Code, its implementing regulations, and advice letters. Advice can be fact-specific, so you should not rely on this training alone for assistance. It's important to familiarize yourself with the lobbyist ordinance, forms, reporting schedule, and the lobbyist manual for more detailed information. This training is designed for individuals who will be compensated to communicate with an officer of the City and County of San Francisco for the purpose of influencing the outcome of a local legislative or administrative action, thus qualifying you as a lobbyist, and will cover information about how to register as a lobbyist. You'll learn how to prepare the reports about money earned, raised, and spent that provide transparency to the public and are required by law. Our goal is to provide you with the tools and information to ensure that you and your employer are compliant with the lobbyist ordinance reporting requirements. There are two ways to qualify as a lobbyist. A lobbyist is any individual who makes one or more lobbying contacts in a calendar month with an officer of the city and county on behalf of any person who pays or who becomes obligated to pay the individual or the individual's employer for lobbyist services, in other words, a client. A lobbyist can also be any individual who makes five or more lobbying contacts in a calendar month with officers of the city and county on behalf of their employer. However, an individual who meets this criteria will not qualify as a lobbyist if they own 20% or more of the employing entity. The next few slides define some of the terms we've just used to explain who qualifies as a lobbyist. First, an individual qualifies as a lobbyist based on the number of times he or she has a lobbying contact with an officer of the city and county. The question then is, what is a lobbying contact? A lobbying contact is any oral or written communication with an officer of the city and county, including any such communication made through an agent, associate, or employee, which is made for monetary compensation and for the purpose of influencing a local legislative or administrative action. A contact may include a phone call, email, letter, text message, or in-person meeting. Take the example of a lobbyist who sends an email to the personal email address of a member of the Board of Supervisors. The message includes a note about their basketball game the night before, as well as an attempt to influence the member's vote on an upcoming resolution. The email constitutes a contact. Listed are the elected and appointed officers of the city and county of San Francisco. The definition of officers also includes members of these boards and commissions, even though they aren't necessarily city boards and commissions. Communicating with staff members may be considered a contact for the purposes of the lobbyist ordinance. Examples of such staff include the legislative aides of the Board of Supervisors, the Mayor's Chief of Staff, and the Deputy Directors of City Departments. Let's say a lobbyist meets with the legislative aide of a member of the Board of Supervisors to advocate on behalf of a client for an amendment to pending legislation sponsored by the board member. Although the board member does not attend the meeting, the lobbyist should presume that the aide will convey the substance of that meeting to the board member and thus the lobbyist will have to report the communication as a contact with the board member. However, other communications with staff are not considered a contact. 
For example, paid representatives of a real estate developer meet with the staff at the planning department to discuss possible modifications to the draft environmental impact report for the developer's project. The staff members do not state or otherwise indicate, and the representatives have no reason to believe that they will have the substance of their conversation conveyed to either the planning director or the zoning administrator. The representatives have not made a lobbying contact. To trigger city lobbying rules, a contact with an officer must concern a local legislative or administrative action. A local legislative or administrative action includes any action listed in the left-hand column that is taken with respect to a city matter listed in the right-hand column. Here's an important rule regarding real estate projects. Various matters concerning a single real estate project are considered a single local legislative or administrative action, and contacts regarding these matters shall be reported by referencing that single project. Now let's talk about what isn't a lobbying contact. The lobbyist ordinance explicitly exempts certain kinds of communications from the definition of a contact. Generally speaking, these exempt communications include those that are made on the public record or are compelled by law or regulation. Examples include providing oral or written testimony that becomes part of the record of a public hearing. Note that in this case, if the testimony is on behalf of a client, you must identify your client. Gathering news and information or disseminating news and information to the public as a representative of a news media organization. Other communications that are exempt from the definition of a contact include performing a duty or service that can be performed only by an architect or a professional engineer licensed to practice in the state of California, making a speech or publishing material that is distributed and made available to the public through a medium of mass communication, for example, radio or television, and providing written information in response to an oral or written request made by an officer of the city and county, provided that the written information is a public record available for public review. Communicating as an officer or employee of a 501c3 organization, certain small 501c4 organizations, or an organization fiscally sponsored by such organizations on behalf of that organization. There are more communications that are explicitly exempt from the definition of a lobbying contact. Please refer to the lobbying manual that is available on the Ethics Commission's website. Importantly, a communication with an officer regarding multiple local legislative or administrative actions is exempt only when an exemption exists with respect to each local legislative or administrative action mentioned in the communication. For example, a paid representative of a city employee labor union meets with the mayor's chief of staff regarding the working conditions of the union's members. During the conversation, the paid representative also asks that the mayor support a particular land use measure the union representative has made one contact with the mayor. Also, the lobbyist ordinance is not intended to regulate attorneys engaged in the practice of law under the California State Bar Act, Business and Professions Code Section 6000 and the sections following. In this regard, communications or activities that would constitute the unauthorized practice of law if performed by a layperson instead of a licensed attorney will not trigger lobbyist registration or reporting. However, please note that an individual will not avoid lobbyist registration and reporting simply because he or she is a licensed attorney. For example, an attorney is representing a corporation that opposes a proposed ordinance. The attorney and the chief executive officer of the corporation meet with the mayor's chief of staff. The attorney begins the meeting by stating that he represents the corporation and that he is acting in his capacity as an attorney for the corporation. Throughout the meeting, the attorney and the CEO urged that the mayor should oppose the proposed ordinance because it would adversely affect the corporation and other companies in the same business sector. The attorney and the CEO have each made a contact. Now that we've talked about what is and isn't a contact, Let's talk about how to count them for reporting purposes. Determine the number of contacts an individual has with an officer of the city and county is important both for determining whether that individual qualifies as a lobbyist and for determining how to report these contacts. In this regard, 
The number of contacts should be determined according to the rules in the following slides. A meeting with an officer regarding a single local legislative or administrative action constitutes one contact. A meeting regarding two local legislative or administrative actions constitutes two contacts, and so forth. You get the idea. A meeting with an officer and a member of that officer's staff regarding a single local legislative or administrative action constitutes one contact with that officer. A meeting with two officers regarding a single local legislative or administrative action constitutes two contacts. Meeting or otherwise communicating multiple times in the same day with an officer to discuss the same local legislative or administrative action discussed earlier in the day constitutes one contact. Each letter, fax, email, text message, or similar communication, or copies thereof, sent to other recipients that pertains to a single local legislative or administrative action constitutes a separate contact even if such letters, faxes, emails, text messages, or other communications are identical or substantially similar. But multiple copies of the same communication sent from the same individual to the same officer shall constitute only one contact. Now we'll discuss how to register with the Ethics Commission as a lobbyist. Registration is required within five business days of the date that the individual meets the qualification thresholds described above. No individual who qualifies as a lobbyist may make any additional contacts with any city officers without first registering with the Ethics Commission. Individuals who qualify as a lobbyist can use the city's registration system, NetFile, to create an online account to complete and file lobbyist disclosure forms with the Ethics Commission. At the time of initial registration, you'll have to provide contact information for yourself. You'll also have to have ready a professional-like quality digital color photo of yourself displaying your head and shoulders in JPEG format to upload. Specifics about the dimensions of the photo are on the Ethics Commission website. You can designate one or more representatives to file lobbyist disclosure reports on your behalf. The $500 registration fee can be paid online by using a debit or credit card or e-check, or by sending a check payable to the City and County of San Francisco to the Ethics Commission offices. You'll receive a confirming email and account password from NetFile once your registration is complete. At that time, you'll have to provide contact information for your client or clients and your employer, if any. Duty to update. Within five days of a change to the information disclosed on the registration statement, a updated registration statement should be electronically filed. Changes include updated lobbyist information, changes to the lobbyist's employer or firm information, changes to client information, including new clients as well as ending representation for old clients, and adding or removing the departments the lobbyist is registered to lobby. When and what to disclose. For each calendar month after registering, you will have to submit a monthly lobbyist disclosure report no later than the 15th calendar day following the end of the month. Monthly filings must be filed whether or not there is reportable activity. Lobbyist activity that is reportable includes payments received or expected for lobbyist services, contacts made with officers of the city and county, activity expenses, and campaign contributions. Required disclosures. Your monthly lobbyist report should include the payments that you received or expected to receive from your employer or the payments that your employer received or expected to receive from each client during the reporting period for lobbyist services. There are special issues regarding the reporting of payments that will be discussed later in this training. Please note, lobbyist services include time spent contacting city officers, as well as time conducting analysis, performing research, providing advice, and recommending strategy with respect to any pending, proposed, or potential legislative or administrative action. Your report must include the following details about contacts made during the reporting period. Be prepared to provide the name of each officer the lobbyist contacted, 
the date on which each contact was made, the local legislative or administrative action that you sought to influence, including a descriptive name, a file number if applicable, the outcome sought, as well as the general subject area you are attempting to influence, and the client on whose behalf each contact was made. You're required to report all political contributions of $100 or more delivered or arranged by the lobbyist or the lobbyist's employer during the reporting period to an officer of the city and county, a candidate for such office, a committee controlled by such officer or candidate, or a committee primarily formed to support or oppose such officer or candidate, or any committee primarily formed to support or oppose a ballot measure to be voted on only in San Francisco. Also, for each contact at which a person providing purely technical data, analysis, or expertise was present, you must provide the name, address, employer, and area of expertise of the person providing the data, analysis, or expertise. You must also report any amendments to your registration information. Lastly, report all activity expenses made, incurred, or arranged by the lobbyist, a lobbyist's client at the behest of the lobbyist, or a lobbyist's employer at the behest of the lobbyist. An activity expense is any payment that you made or asked your client or employer to make within three months of a contact who benefits from the payment or whose immediate family or registered domestic partner benefits from the expense. Activity expenses will be discussed in greater detail later in this training. This section of the lobbyist training explores special issues regarding the disclosure requirements we just discussed. A lobbyist must report on his or her monthly disclosure reports, payments received or expected during the reporting period for the provision of lobbyist services. What is reported depends on whether the lobbyist represents a client or the lobbyist's employer. A lobbyist's employer includes any person required to provide an IRS Form W-2 to an employee who performs lobbyist services or is owned by a lobbyist and which performs and charges clients for lobbyist services. You must report on your monthly disclosure reports economic consideration that you or your employer received or expect to receive from each client during the reporting period for providing lobbyist services, as well as any reimbursements for travel costs and other expenses related to lobbyist services. You are not required to report payments for other services provided that were not related to lobbyist services. If two or more lobbyists work for the same employer all economic consideration received or expected from the employer's clients for lobbyist services may be reported by a single lobbyist on his or her monthly disclosure report so long as the lobbyist discloses all such economic consideration in that manner throughout the calendar year. If you are lobbying on behalf of your employer, you will have to calculate the amount of economic consideration to report each month. To calculate the amount to report, Multiply your salary received that month, plus any bonuses or other incentive compensation, by the percentage of time that you spent performing lobbyist services. Also include any bonuses directly resulting from the lobbyist services. For example, the Director of Governmental Affairs at a large corporation is a registered lobbyist and earns a salary of $10,000 per month. She spends 10% of her time in December performing lobbyist services for her employer. She also earns a year-end bonus of $10,000 in December based on her overall work performance. She must report receiving $2,000 in economic consideration for lobbyist services in December. An activity expense is any expense that you made, incurred, or arranged, or that you asked your client or employer to make, incur, or arrange within three months of a contact with an officer, candidate, or supervisor's aide who benefits in whole or in part from the expense, or whose immediate family or registered domestic partner benefits from the expense. Activity expenses include honoraria, consulting fees, salaries, and any other thing of value totaling more than $25 in a consecutive three-month period. Activity expenses do not include campaign contributions. In your monthly report include the date and amount of each activity expense, the full name and official position, if any, of the beneficiary, a description of the benefit and the amount of the benefit, the full name and official position, if any, of each payee, if other than the beneficiary, 
If you are reporting the salary of an individual, you need only disclose the salary in increments of less than or equal to $250, greater than $250 but less than or equal to $1,000, greater than $1,000 but less than or equal to $10,000, or greater than $10,000. Reporting campaign contributions. Future slides will cover when campaign contribution prohibitions apply to lobbyists, but here are the scenarios when lobbyists must disclose campaign contributions. Report campaign contributions of $100 or more made by the lobbyist or where the lobbyist acted as an agent or intermediary for the contribution to an officer of the city and county, a candidate for such office, a committee controlled by such officer or candidate, any committee formed to support or oppose such officer or candidate, or any committee formed to support or oppose a ballot measure to be voted on only in San Francisco. Reportable contributions include those contributions that are made or delivered by you or your employer during the reporting period, are made by a client at the behest of you or your employer during the reporting period, are arranged by you during the reporting period, including contributions that you know or have reason to know were raised as a result of fundraising by you, your agent, or your employer. Fundraising activities include asking a person to make a contribution or inviting them to a fundraising event, providing a list of names of people to invite to a fundraising event, including your name or signature on an invitation to a fundraising event, holding a fundraising event at your home or business. Other reportable fundraising activities include paying for at least 20% of the cost of a fundraising event, hiring someone to conduct a fundraising event, delivering a contribution other than your own by mail, messenger, or in person, or acting as an agent or intermediary in connection with the making of a contribution. An example of fundraising is where a lobbyist solicits a contribution from one person to a candidate for the Board of Supervisors. The solicited person specifically indicates that he will mail the contribution check for $500 to the candidate the next day. After confirming the next day that the contribution has been made, the lobbyist must disclose that contribution. What to report about contributions? For each reportable contribution, disclose the amount of the contribution, the name of the contributor, the date the contribution was made, the contributor's occupation, the contributor's employer, or, if self-employed, the name of the contributor's business, and the committee to which the contribution was made. There are special reporting rules for contributions that are arranged by two or more individuals. If multiple lobbyists working for the same employer together arrange contributions, or the lobbyist's employer arranges such contributions, whether through a fundraising event or otherwise, all of the arranged contributions may be reported by a single registered lobbyist. If a lobbyist arranges contributions with another individual who is neither a lobbyist nor an employee of the lobbyist's employer, the lobbyist is responsible for reporting all the contributions. If two more lobbyists not working for the same employer together arrange contributions, whether through a fundraising event or otherwise, all such arranged contributions should be reported either according to which lobbyist or employer bore primary responsibility for soliciting the contribution or in approximate proportion to each lobbyist's or employer's participation in the fundraising activity. The next set of slides covers prohibitions and requirements for city lobbyists. There are some areas where certain lobbyist actions are prohibited, restricted, or required. The next set of slides are about these areas. Let's start with the subject of gift limits. Prohibition gifts from lobbyists. Contact lobbyists may not make gifts, including gifts of travel to any officer of the city and county or the officer's parent, spouse, domestic partner, or dependent children. Officers of the city and county cannot accept or solicit any gifts, including gifts of travel, from any officer or intermediary on behalf of a lobbyist to benefit the officer, 
their parent, spouse, domestic partner, or dependent children. Please note that Proposition T, passed in 2016, removed an exemption that allowed lobbyists to make gifts of $25 or less. Prohibition on Restricted Source Gift Solicitation Please note that Campaign and Governmental Conduct Code Section 3.216b prohibits city officers or employees from soliciting gifts from restricted sources. Restricted Source Examples A restricted source is a person doing business with or seeking to do business with the department of a city officer or employee or a person who, during the prior 12 months, knowingly attempted to influence the city officer or employee in a legislative or administrative action. This includes a lobbyist, a lobbyist's client or employer, a person who does not qualify as a lobbyist due to attempting to influence on behalf of a business of which the person owns a 20% or greater share, or attempting to influence on behalf of a nonprofit where they are an officer or an employee. Local exemptions, gifts from restricted sources. The Ethics Commission provides exemptions via regulation that applies to gifts from restricted sources, including four voluntary non-cash gifts of $25 or less per calendar year. Review the regulation or contact the Ethics Commission for more details. Ethics Commission regulations can be found at www.sfethics.org under Laws and Advice. Prohibition Soliciting Behested Payments San Francisco City officers and Form 700 filers are prohibited from directly or indirectly soliciting any behested payment from interested parties. Interested parties in a lobbying context include lobbyists registered to lobby the officer or employee's department and a lobbyist's employer or client, including affiliates of a client who have attempted to influence the officer or employee's department on legislative or administrative action in the last 12 months through a lobbyist. Prohibitions on campaign contributions. No lobbyist shall make any contribution to a city elective officer or their controlled committee or a candidate for city elective office if the lobbyist is registered to lobby the agency of the city elective officer or the agency for which the candidate is seeking election or the lobbyist has been registered to lobby that agency in the previous 90 days. If a lobbyist fails to disclose which agencies they will lobby, the lobbyist cannot make a contribution to any city elective officer, candidate, or their controlled committees. Prohibition on bundling of campaign contributions. No lobbyist shall deliver or transmit directly or through a third party any contribution made to a city elective officer or their controlled committee, or a candidate for city elective office if the lobbyist is registered to lobby the agency of the city elective officer or the agency for which the candidate is seeking election, or the lobbyist has been registered to lobby the agency in the previous 90 days. If a lobbyist fails to disclose which agency they will lobby, the lobbyist may not transmit contributions to any city elective officer, candidate, or their controlled committee. Prohibition on lobbying by campaign consultants. If you are a campaign consultant, you and those affiliated with you are generally prohibited from communicating with any officer of the city and county who is a current or former client on behalf of another person in exchange for economic consideration for the purpose of influencing local legislative or administrative action. Lobbyists may not evade or attempt to evade the requirements of the lobbyist ordinance through indirect efforts or through the use of agents or others. The lobbyist ordinance prohibits any person from knowingly and intentionally furnishing false or fraudulent evidence, documents, or information to the Ethics Commission, District Attorney, or City Attorney. The lobbyist ordinance also prohibits any person from knowingly and intentionally misrepresenting any material fact or concealing evidence, documents, or information relevant to an investigation by the Ethics Commission, District Attorney, or City Attorney of an alleged violation of the lobbyist ordinance. An officer or employee of the city and county is required to cooperate and assist with an investigation into an alleged violation of the lobbyist ordinance by the Ethics Commission, District Attorney, or City Attorney. 
You must complete a lobbyist training session offered by the Ethics Commission within one year of your initial registration. This training satisfies this requirement. Thereafter, you must attend additional training sessions as required by the Ethics Commission's Executive Director. On or before the deadline for completing any required lobbyist training session, you must file a signed declaration with the Ethics Commission stating, under penalty of perjury, that you completed the required training session. Finally, you must file a separate employment statement if you employ or induce a client to employ any city officer, any immediate family member, or registered domestic partner of a city officer, or any full-time employee of the city in any capacity. You must also file an employment statement if one of your employees is appointed to a city office. Employment statements must be filed with the Ethics Commission within 10 days of the employment or appointment. The statements must include the employee's name, the date first employed, the nature of the employment duties, and the salary or rate of pay of the employee. The next few slides will discuss administrative and civil penalties for violations of the lobbyist ordinance and the addition of clients and employers to the list of those who may be held jointly and severally liable for lobbyist ordinance violations. The Ethics Commission and the City Attorney may seek penalties of up to $5,000 per violation of the lobbyist ordinance or three times the amount not properly reported or three times the amount given or received in excess of the gift limit, whichever is greater. The city attorney may bring an action to revoke for up to one year the registration of any lobbyist who knowingly violates the lobbyist ordinance. The client or employer of a lobbyist will be jointly and severally liable for all violations of the lobbyist ordinance committed by the lobbyist in connection with acts or omissions undertaken on behalf of the client or employer. Effective January 1, 2015, permit consultants are required to register with the Ethics Commission and file quarterly disclosure reports. An individual who qualifies as both a lobbyist and a permit consultant may elect to file only monthly lobbyist reports, not the permit consultant's quarterly disclosure report, so long as the monthly lobbyist report includes all of the information that would be reported on the permit consultant quarterly disclosure report. You must have indicated this election on your permit consultant registration statement and must continue to file in this manner through the end of the calendar year. You terminate as both a lobbyist and a permit consultant, whichever is earlier. This concludes our lobbyist training. We have attempted to summarize the key provisions of the city's lobbyist ordinance. We've identified who qualifies as a lobbyist, what constitutes a contact with an officer of the city and county of San Francisco, and outlined the types of communications that are exempt from being a contact. We've discussed how you have to register with the Ethics Commission as a lobbyist within five business days of meeting the qualification thresholds for being a lobbyist, and that you must renew your registration every February 1st. We've talked about the monthly disclosure report that you're required to file due the 15th day of every month for the preceding calendar month. We've explained how to count the number of contacts to report and what you're required to disclose. And we went over prohibited and restricted activities and penalties for violations of the lobbyist ordinance. If you have specific questions regarding these rules or their application, please contact Ethics Commission staff by phone at 415-252 3100 or email at ethics.commission at sfgov.org. You may also visit our offices at 25 Van Ness Avenue, Suite 220, San Francisco, California, 94102. Thank you for your participation in the Lobbyist Ordinance Training.